Hello friends, today we are going to discuss disability and media. This lecture is a part of your paper media and margins. In this lecture, we are going to discuss different models of disability and its interactions with media. Furthermore, we would also examine the role of media with reference to disability. Societies have for, have for centuries constructed norms and so has it done to describe bodily structures too. The extent of divines from the set norm defines the other. It often becomes difficult to assess where this construction ends and the reality begins. Disability for centuries was looked upon as a divance from the norm, as the other population. It has not been very long since an inclusive approach has been adopted while addressing the needs of the persons with disability. The progressive development of various models of disability reflects the history of the disability rights movement while looking at the approach of the, of, the, of the society in dealing with disability, we may categorize the phrases into three models. The religious model, the medical model and the social model. The religious model of disability grounds disability in the context of religious beliefs, myths and texts. In the Judeo-Christian society, the understanding of bodily differences have been rooted in biblical references. The persons with disability are looked upon as the result of evil spirits, displeasure of the gods or witchcraft. In the Hindu doctrine of Karmavala, disability is projected as a result of the sins one may have committed in the previous births. Dr. J. N. Karna in his book United Nations and Rights of the Disabled Persons a study in Indian perspective talks about this. He further adds that in India where illiteracy prevails, disability and diseases are often linked with disobedience of religious norms or rituals. The Indian epics depicted persons with disability in an exclusive manner. For instance, the character of Manthara in the Ramayana is portrayed with a hunch on her back and is projected as a very shrewd and evil woman. Similarly, Dhritarashtra in the Mahabharata was visually impaired and, and responsible for the war of Kurukshetra. The character of Shakuni in the said epic had a limping leg and is known to be the most convincing mind in the epic. In this model, it is a belief that any person with a disability has taken both in the disabled form to pay for the sins they had committed in their last life. Persons with disability were never allowed to inherit the throne or considered a heir to a designated position with this belief. Though this model of disability is less prevalent today, there are many cultures which still connect disability to sin and shame. This model has often resulted in ostracism and shame. As science progressed, the priests and exorcists of the religious model were replaced by physicians and scientists. The defined norm of health remained a youthful, abled body with a rational thinking mind. Those who lacked any aspect of this was placed at an inferior position of the hierarchy. This is the, medi this is the medical model of disability. This was when human productivity and work came to be the primary focus of human societies. The medical model anchored in the persistent effort to enable the disabled in order to be a productive member of the society. Further, it also established institutions where the disabled could be placed for care and reform so that the family can meet their societal obligations. The tendency to label a person with a reference to the disability he or she has become frequent in this model. 
stresses on the functional traits of the individual instead of fixing the external obstacles in the immediate environment. In contrast to the medical model of the social model conceptualizes disability as a problem caused by the society in the manner it organizes itself considering the needs of the majority. This model does not look at disability as an individual problem or a disease. The social model locates disability squarely within a society. It addresses the social, political, psychological, environmental and economic barriers existing in the society which makes it disabling for certain individuals with embodies different from the majority. If we take the instance of a visually impaired person, the medical model would confine its solutions to medically diagnose the extent of the disability. The social model on the other hand would assess the barriers in the immediate environment of the individual and work towards removing it, thus making life better for him. The tactile path, braille, screen, reading software, etc. are interventions of the social model. In recent times, the social model has furthermore taken into account the political aspects of disability. This gave rise to the rights based model of disability which has been successful in translating the concerns of PWDs to policies and legislations. Having engaged in identity policy politics, disability activists are adopting strategies similar to other social movements. The background. So, let us get a backgrounder first of how we reached where we are today. The 70s decade witnessed the first wave of serious concern for the PWD. Though the struggle was mostly between a few individuals and the state, it was able to mark the beginning of the DRM in India. However, it received little attention and was not able to make significant structural changes in the system. At the global level, post World War II, an intensive dialogue on disability rights had begun. It is believed that it was triggered by the thousands of soldiers who were disabled by war and their families had joined them in their political struggle. The larger DRM at the global level facilitated funds to run the campaign in India. Thus, one may observe that in 80s the DRM was largely managed by the NGOs with singular focus on a particular type of disability. With the announcement of 1982-1993 as the decade of disabled persons by the United Nations, there was a shift of focus on rehabilitation. The Mental Health Act 1987 came into existence which focused on regulating standards in mental health institutions. The 90s decade saw the rise of disability activists with the campaign going stronger. This resulted in the People with Disability Act 1995, which is substantive provisions related to prevention and early detection. Education, employment, affirmative action, non-discrimination, barrier-free access, research and manpower development and institutions for persons with severe disabilities. The Act also called for 3% reservation of PWD in government jobs. The disability status was never canvassed in the census from 1941 to 1971. In 1981, three types of disabilities were included in, in the census only to be left out again in 1991. In 2001, the census revealed 2.1% of the total population has disability. But experts argue that this number is understated, understated due to the lack of a proper definition of disability. Several categories including intellectual disabilities were ex excluded from the list. In 2011, the number was 2.21% of the total population. In the meantime, United Nations Convention on the Persons with Disabilities was adopted on 13 December 2006. 
and it became into effect on 3 May 2008. This convention gave a broad categorization of disabilities and clarified how all categories of rights applies to persons with disabilities. It further signified the areas where adaptations have to be made to make it possible for the persons with disabilities to exercise their rights. India has ratified it without any reservations and to codify India, India's obligations under the convention, the rights of people with disabilities bill was drafted in 2011. The rights of people with disabilities bill 2014 extended the definition of disability from 7 to 21 categories. It has presented a rights based it has presented a rights based perspective to approach disability and expanded its definition from a medical framework to a social one. The 3rd of December was marked as the International Day of Disabled Persons. Every year the theme adopted is one step ahead to make life beautiful for the PWD. Media representation of disability. Let us now look at how media has representation of persons with disabilities. Media has played a significant role in constructing the image and identity of the disabled. Sometimes media reflects the existing perceptions of the society while in other times it helps to depict an alternative scenario. We have all come across the representation of disability in various forms of mass media. Let us try and revisit some of this and try to critically look at the impact of mass media in constructing and construing popular perceptions on disability and the disabled. The two main questions we are going to address in this section are how disability is portrayed in media and in what ways? 2. How do the audience interpret these representations? One of the most influential disability rights activists, Paul Hunt, wrote in a, one of the books, essays in the book, Stigma, published in 1960s that we are tired of being statistics, cases, wonderfully courageous example to the world pitiable objects to stimulate funding. The statement articulates the main hurdle in the path of disability emancipation. That is the stereotyped portrayal of the disabled in popular culture. In the 60s and 70s, mainstream Hindi movies depicted a pitiable image of the disabled. The disabled character would never be the protagonist. It would invariably be a small role and the depiction would be that of a poverty stricken persons in a downtrodden condition. There was no scope for the character to be empowered. Thus was the general perception about the disabled in the society. In 1991, Paul Hunt identified 10 stereotypes that the media used to portray the disabled. The disabled person as pitiable or pathetic an object of curiosity or violence, sinister or evil, the super cripple as atmosphere laughable, his or her own worst enemy, as a burden, as non-sexual, being unable to participate in daily life. It would be wrong to not to mention about movies like Spurs and Cosis which made an effort to break the conventional stereotypes. However, such movies came to be categorized in the parallel cinema category which had limited viewership. If we juxtapose the decade with the history of the disability rights movement, we would notice that these were the lean times for the disabled in the real world too. The real world was just depicting the real without challenging any set norms. In the last decade, Indian film industry has made some remarkable contributions in portraying disability in an empowering manner. 
movies like Iqbal, Margarita, with a straw celebrated the special abilities of PWD, while Black, Tare Jameen Par, Koi Mil Gaya, etc., made conscious effort in talking about other forms of disability in their everyday struggles. Indian film industry has finally decided to look at disabled persons through an emancipatory lens. In the advertising industry, one would find two frames in which disability is portrayed. One is the mainstream brand advertising, while the other is the advertising done by charity organizations for funding. The former is rare, while the latter mostly is found highlighting the disability in the persons rather than emphasizing on the environment that is disabling. It is still a rare sight to see a PWD in any brand advertisement, in both print and electronic except when the advertisement is about any event or object related to disability. For instance, the campaign designed for the Paralympic event in recent times, however, many multinationals are found to be warming up to the idea of integrating the PWDs in the advertising campaigns. One such advertisement is the new KFC advertisement shows two friends bonding over fried chicken. One of the friend is hearing impaired and they both communicate in sign language. Another is a Nescafe ad which shows how a person with excessive stammer turns it into a matter of strength. These advertisements are different and they do make a difference. Print media has been utilized by disability activists to take the DRM forward. The newspapers and magazines has a wide circulation and it provided for a large space to write and debate about the various issues of the disabled. The representation of the PWD in print media can be categorized into three groups reporting on any harassment meted out to the person with disability, articles on success stories of various persons with disabilities, articles or database on the rights of the disabled. In the first category, the reporters seems to highlight the disability in the person creating a pitiable picture. This category may include stories of exorcism or like to treat or ostracize, ostracize PWD in an effort to reflect the majoritarian attitude towards the minority. The second category includes stories like that of Sudha Chandran, the dancer with locomotive disability or Ajit Kumar, the visually impaired IS officer. Stories on inclusive models like the restaurant Ecos where all employees are deaf and mute or Udan, the musical band of the visually impaired are a welcoming change. Such stories celebrate the abilities of the disabled and contributes immensely to change the larger perceptions. The third category is crucial to take the campaign on DRM forward. Consistent engagement with the print media helps in churning public opinion and also in creating awareness. Disorders like autism, ADHD, Asperger's syndrome, etc. require awareness and print media has been doing a commendable job in giving space to columns exclusive to problems and issues related to the wide spectrum of disorders which are little known to people. The new media refers to the digital media and we are going to analyze how new media plays its role in addressing disability. The role of new media can be examined from two, from two frames. One, when the PWD activists are using it as a forum to publicize its campaign and garner public support. Two, new media as a tool to access information and services for and by the PWD. New media has revolutionized spaces of expression for the PWD. Social networking sites have a catalytic effect on campaigns related to disability rights. It has become easier to mobilize public support and generate positive public perception through sharing, 
dialoguing and debating in the social media sites. New media has made it possible for activists to run a campaign in a cost effective and less time consuming manner. Moreover, now it has become possible for PWD to directly participate and sometimes even lead a campaign on issues related to disability rights. Any kind of violation is easily brought to notice through the internet. The reach of information is manifold. To generate content that suits the requirement of the user has helped the disabled population. Entertainment, regular service deliveries, financial management, shopping, libraries, etc. have gone on the wave and this makes it easily accessible for the PWD. The PWDs also access digital media as an interface on several platforms. Screen reader software such as JAWS, NVXS, ORCA, etc. help the visually impaired to access books and other written material. Audiobook libraries can be accessed on the internet. The various service delivery applications have made life easier for the PWD. The role of media has a great impact in creating and changing perceptions. It would not be an exaggeration to say that the image of a disabled person is largely created by media. Thus, it is a huge responsibility for the media to take it seriously and make a conscious effort to bring in change. Now, let us come to the second part of the discussion. How do people read the message conveyed by media? The three theories propounded by sociologists namely the limited effects theory, the class dominant theory and the culturalist theory may throw light on what drives the reception of media content. The limited effects theory came and was tested in the 40s and 50s. It was at a time when the dominance of media was far less than today. It argued that the influence of media is very limited on people's perception because views and opinions are based on what one already believes. The main critic to this theory is that media goes beyond presenting facts. It constructs opinions through discussions and debates. The class dominant theory argues that media is controlled by a handful of elite who manipulates information suiting the corporate interests. One cannot deny that many movements and social issues are brought to the fore by the media. The critics argue that through media may be in the hands of an elite, few the news is churned by journalists who have ethics to follow. The culturalist theory came in, came in the 90s at a time when media was in its prime. This theory considers the audience as active recipients of information. The content should be appealing to the cultural context and yet be conveying a strong message. The inclusion of PWDs in the media workforce is also a rarity. Portrayal of disability is largely in the hands of people who have no lived experience of living in the life of a disabled. Increasing the percentage of employees with disability would be a large step in empowering them and also in removing stereotypes. Greenback's strange hypothesis which states that one or two salient programs can dramatically change set notions and stereotypes should be considered in earnest. It would call for exceptional sensitivity on the part of the media and tremendous creativity to come up with such content and if PWDs are involved, the process itself would be empowering and would have far reaching effects. Media sensitivity Considering the enormous role media plays in shaping the perceptions of people on disability, it should play its role responsibly and sensitively. Now we will discuss the aspects media must guard while dealing with disability. Words of terms, media should use terms carefully when it comes to disability. Words like crippled or retarded colors the identity of the individual with the disability. 
such words are derogatory and does not give any space to preserve dignity. Research and dialogue on disability has been going on and there has been changes in the words and terms used to denote certain forms of disabilities. For instance, mental retardation is not used anymore. Intellectual disability is the term used commonly. Media should keep itself abreast of these developments. Also, there is a manner in which a PWD is addressed. For instance, instead of saying a spastic child, one should say a child with cerebral palsy. The moment we say spastic child, it implies that the existence of the child is not recognized beyond its disability. These subtle aspects makes a good deal of difference in the way of masses is conveyed. Media accessibility. Media while constructing content must consider the disabled population in mind. Doordarshan telecasts news in the sign language once in a week. No other content seen on the current day television seems to consider the people with disabilities. Similarly, how many newspapers or magazines are there in braille in the age of new media despite the limited choices audiobooks are a blessing to the visually impaired how many of the e-marketing sites which sells books sell audiobooks one would find kindle version hardcover soft cover but no audiobooks this is because very few books are converted to audio formats. Representation. Media often represents PWDs as heroes or victims. It must attempt to integrate them in the society by consciously publishing articles to create awareness on the different forms of disability alongside the success stories. The focus should be to mold the general perception of people to bring in an attitudinal change. Summary. So, let, let us now try and summarize what we discussed in the lecture. We begin by examining the different models of disability. We try to briefly discuss the trajectory of the disability rights movement in India. We looked into the phrases through which the movement emerged and took shape. We then discussed the interaction between various forms of media and disability. We examined the different representations of disability in the media and its emerging patterns. We further looked into the driving force behind people's reception of the content and into the ways in which media should deal with disability sensitively. Do attempt the questions in the self-evaluate quadrant. For further reading suggestions, please refer to the third quadrant. Thank you.